This is Mac from jlptbootcamp.com here with another N5 grammar lesson. And today we're going to talk about mo and mata. And uh, mo and mata are used to talk about the change of state or uh, a state that remains the same. And although these are kind of, I guess, easy to learn, they're easy to get confused. Um, or at least for me it was uh, easy to get these two confused when I first started studying Japanese. So um, kind of an important uh, thing to try to keep separate and I'll do my best to uh, explain the differences here. But just to set the scene, your friend is asking you about your experiences in Japan. And he asks, Okonomiyaki wa tabita? And... Uh, Okonomiyaki is, uh, if, you're, if you're not familiar, it's basically this uh, kind of uh, Japanese pizza, so to speak. It's, um, it's a big, uh, it's, they mix batter and cabbage and some, some kind of meat together and they fry it on a, a hot plate and then they flip it over and they add some okonomiyaki sauce, which is kind of a sweet uh, soy sauce and um, then some bonito and uh, mayonnaise and some uh, seaweed flakes and all that stuff. It's really good. It, if you describe it, it doesn't sound very good, but it's actually really good. Um, and it's very famous uh, in Osaka um, for, uh, for people to eat. So if you're in Osaka, you should try okonomiyaki. But um, your friend's asking so about okonomiyaki. Uh, tabita is uh, the past tense of taberu, which is to eat. And you respond, mo tabita, oishikatta. So, mo is already in this situation. Tabita, uh, I've already eaten it. Um, and another way to think of this instead of just translating it as already is to think of it as uh, a state has changed. So, it's it's changed from you not eating it to you eating it. And the final state was you ate it. Um, and, and of course you comment oishikata. So oishi is delicious. Oishikata is the past tense of oishi. So it was delicious. And you were using mo, uh, which is used to talk about a change in state. In a positive sentence, this can tr be translated as uh, already. So, for example, in this sentence, densha wa mo demashita ka? So, densha is the uh, the train. Wa is the topic mark marking particle. Mo is, uh, in a positive sentence here, is already. Demashita is uh, the past tense of deru. Deru is to leave. And ka at the end there is how we make polite questions. Usually casual questions will end with a no, but um, ca the polite questions, questions that you're going to hear on N5, normally end with ka. So this is, um, yes, it's translated as already, but I think it'll be easier for you to use and understand if you just think about it as it's talking about a change in state. In the, the, the sentence that you use, that's the final state uh, that you are in. So it wasn't eaten, now it is eaten. Um, and moving on, we're going to talk about the negative, how to use it negatively. Uh, your friend is asking about, uh, still asking about some experiences in Japan this time. He wants to know about natto. And natto is, um, if you're not familiar, it's basically fermented soybeans. It's kind of a, uh, they taste like beans and they're kind of sticky and they kind of smell bad. And so some people are not really big fans of uh, natto, um, but they are really healthy. It's, uh, it's a traditional, I'm using air quotes here, um, Japanese breakfast item. Uh, these days a lot of people in Japan eat toast, but uh, you know, to be traditional you would eat um, this, uh, this natto with uh, some rice. And so your friend is asking, um, did you eat natto before? Natto wa tabeta? And you respond, e demo natto wa mo tabenai. Um, e is yes, demo is but. 
Uh, Nato is uh, the food, of course. Wa is marking the topic. Mo is, uh, in this situation, the negative sentence means not anymore. So, mo tabe nai, I don't eat it anymore. And so your friend wants to know, naze, why? And you respond, kusai kara. So, kusai um, is, means smelly, smells bad. And kara is, uh, marks the reason for something here. The reason for not eating it anymore uh, is that it's smelly. And, I mean, kara can be translated as because uh, oftentimes. But, again, it's, it's probably easier for you to think about and for you to uh, use the grammar point if you think of it as kara marks the reason for something. Um, so... This is mo, and we're using it with a negative verb this time. And with a negative verb, it has a meaning of not anymore. Uh, it's, uh, again, mo is talking about the change. So this time you're changing from a positive state to a negative state. So, uh, for example, Tanaka-san wa mo isugashikunai desu. So before, Tanaka-san was uh, busy, isugashi. Uh, now he has changed to not being busy, the state of not being busy. So he's not busy anymore uh, is uh, how you would translate this. But again, try to think of it as uh, state changing. And the opposite of mo is mada. So we're going to take a little uh, look at how to use mada here. And your friend is still asking you about uh, your eating experiences in Japan, and he asks, Fugu wa tabeta? And uh, fugu is blowfish, uh, or pufferfish, as it's sometimes called. Um, very uh, expensive uh, delicacy, which I've had, and I have to say that um, it's it's so-so, it's okay, It's but it's, it doesn't really taste like anything special. I think it's one of those things that people just eat uh, because it's really expensive. Um, but you respond here, Ie fugu wa uh, mara tabete nai. So Ie is uh, no, fugu marking uh, the uh, the topic, wa is marking the topic of fugu, uh, pufferfish. Mara is yet, um, I still haven't, uh, has that kind of meaning. Tabete inai. I still uh, didn't eat it, is uh, kind of the literal translation. Um, and you might be wondering why we use tabete inai uh, here, or uh, that's to mark a state. So this is a negative state, tabete inai. Positive state would be tabete iru. Uh, I'm eating, I didn't eat. Um, <clears throat> Since with mo and mata we talk about states, it sounds a little bit more natural uh, to say tabete inai than it would be to say tabe nai uh, in this situation. Um, you could say it, but it would sound a little strange. I mean, you'd be understood, but uh, it's not, um, it's probably uh, grammatically okay, but um, just something that people wouldn't say. Um, and this is kind of a little bit N4-ish, N3-ish kind of a grammar point with the states here. Uh, the te form plus iru or te plus inai. Um, so don't worry about it too much. The main thing to focus on here is mo and mada. Um, but um, anyway, about mada, you, you use mada to talk about a state that hasn't changed uh, so, for example, another example here, Sato-san wa Osaka ni mara sundeimasu ka? So, Sato-san, Mr. Sato, wa is the topic marking particle. Uh, Osaka is uh, the city of Osaka. And ni is in, in this situation. Mara is uh, still. Sunde is the te form of sumu which means to live, as in to reside in one place. And imas, that's the, to talk about the state 
um, of uh, a state of living in a particular place. And then ka is the question marking particle asking um, is this uh, is this a true statement, yes or no? And um, so yeah, mana is used to talk about something hasn't changed um, and it has that implication that it might change in the future. Uh, the same as if we use yet, like I haven't been, I haven't been to Paris yet. Uh, it has that feeling of I want to go to Paris in the future, um, I but I I just haven't done it yet. I didn't do it yet, uh, but uh, maybe in the future I'll do it. So that's what you're kind of emphasizing here that sometime in the future that condition that state might change, and so that's how you would uh, normally use that. So again, just a quick uh, ex example of the differences here. Um, these are some really simple sentences that uh, that you uh, that are kind of um, a little artificial here sounding, but um, just to to show you the difference between mo and mada. Mo talking about change in state, so pizza o tabimasen. Before you didn't eat the pizza. Now, pizza wa mo tabimashita. So uh, it's changed, the state has changed. I didn't eat it and I've already, I already ate it. Um, but mada, it's still the same condition. So pizza o tabimasen, pizza wa uh, mada tabimasen. So I still haven't um, eaten it. I still haven't eaten uh, the pizza. I've I've eaten other things. Um, that's what the wall contrasting particle is used here for. But I didn't eat the pizza uh, yet. Is what the mata would be translated as. So uh, that's the main difference between mo and mata. Do you think you have it all? We're gonna do a quick pop quiz here. Can you translate this into Japanese? I don't see Mr. Tanaka anymore. I don't see Mr. Tanaka anymore. What's that in Japanese? You would say Tanaka san ni wa mo aimasen. So this is kind of a trick question. Um, the this C in English can be translated a couple different ways in Japanese. Um, if you're talking about C as in to meet someone. Uh, to go and have drinks with or at work or something, you'd use ao, um, which has a translation of to meet. Um, this is uh, this is what is most commonly used to mean like kind of meet up with someone. And so um, can get kind of uh, tricky with ao, um, especially since you need to use ni with the person you're meeting. So uh, somebody... Ni, uh, plus ni, somebody's name, Tanaka-san ni, and then ao is how you'd use ao to meet someone. And in this situation, you met them before, but that state has changed. Now you don't meet them. You don't see them anymore. All right, another example. I already did my homework. I already did my homework. What would that be in Japanese? Shukudai o mo shimashita. Shukudai is homework. O is the object marking particle. Um, and mo uh, shimashita, that is, uh, that means you, the, the, the state has changed from not doing it to doing it. Um, it's, so shimashita is finished. I did it. And last one is he still is sleeping. And uh, he in Japanese is kare. So for that one, you'd say kare wa mada neteimas. So kare is uh, he. Wa is marking the, the topic there, talking about he. And. Um, 
And Mata is to talk about uh, there's it still um, the the state hasn't changed. Nete is the te form of Nehru to sleep, and Imas is the state of uh, sleeping. So that's it for today. Uh, Mo again is to talk about a change in state from a negative state to a positive state. Mata is to talk about a state that hasn't changed yet. It kind of implies that it will change, uh, it might change in the future. And that's it. Um, if you know someone that is studying for the N5, I'm sure they would appreciate uh, that you sent this video along to help them about the tricky differences between Mo and Mata. And uh, you can help them out. And um, if you are interested in more tips like these uh, for the JLBT, be sure to follow me on Twitter. It's JLBT Help there. Or uh, um, like the uh, Facebook page uh, on Facebook, JLPT Bootcamp uh, on Facebook. Or, of course, uh, come visit the website, jlptbootcamp.com, and uh, um, read up on all the different things JLPT related. Uh, until next time, have a good couple of weeks studying. This has been a grammar explanation video from the JLPT Bootcamp Premium site. Inside the site, you will find some extra goodies, for example, some cheat sheets for all of the videos. And those cheat sheets include, include a few things, for example, some uh, common mistakes that people make, uh, as well as some example test questions for the JLPT. If you're interested in taking the JLPT and you uh, want that extra edge, something to kind of push you um, above and get the points that you need to pass, I encourage you to stop by the website uh, at uh, jlptbootcamp.com forward slash premium. There you can find the cheat sheets as well as some extra practice with the grammar points uh, that uh, I've been talking about today. Hope to see you in the uh, premium site very soon. This has been Mac from jlptbootcamp.com.